What could possibly be better than a lithium iron phosphate battery with low temperature charge protection? How about a lithium iron phosphate battery that heats itself? This is the 100 amp hour self-heating battery from Redoto, this time on Ham Radio Tube. Now a lot of lithium iron phosphate batteries do include low temperature charging protection, which is great. I think every lithium iron phosphate battery should have low temperature charging protection so you don't damage the cells. But what happens if it's cold out and you need to recharge your battery? Well, this one is smart enough to know that if these cells get below freezing and you plug a charger into it, it's not going to charge the battery. Instead, it's going to turn on the heating pads that are inside and warm the battery up above freezing and then it's going to start charging so you're not stuck out there in the cold not being able to charge your battery. That is a tremendous function. So let's take a look at this battery. We'll do some tests. I'm going to throw this in the freezer and we'll see what happens, but I am really excited about this battery. So let's take a look at the battery. Here we've got a nice size battery. It's a little bit bigger than some of the other batteries, measured about 13 inches wide, uh, about eight and a half tall, and oh, about six and a quarter deep. You can see 12.8 volts, 100 amp hour, and auto heating. That is the function that we care about this. Looking at the top, we've got, I think these are M8 style uh, bolts with Phillips head screws in there that are going to come with a lock washer and a regular washer to keep it nice and tight. Also comes with a nice carrying strap that is removable by simply sliding it out of these slots. You can take that off if you want or you can easily put it back on. It's made of a hard ABS plastic. Here's the back of it just kind of says the same thing, a little bit different information, but and then we get this nice user manual pack. Comes in this nice zippered pouch. We're gonna have our product manual, kind of a quick start guide, some do's and don'ts, and some Rodoto stickers if you're into that. The manual's written out very well, very similar to other lithium iron phosphate batteries that I've tested in the past. You got your voltage, your charging voltage, recommended charging current. You've got a max continuous just discharge of 100 amps and a continuous load power of 1280 watts. And here you can see we have the M8 1.25 millimeter terminals on there. Here's the dimensions which we just went over. Some safety instructions there. Here's the specifications again. Here we talk about the self-heating function, so you can see it looks like we have some prismatic cells inside with some heating pads on either side. And basically the way this works, we're gonna test this. The automatic self-heating function will be activated by the BMS when the battery is connected to a charger at minus 20 Celsius to five Celsius, or which is minus four to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And the heating will be stopped when the battery temperature has reached the set value, which normally takes uh, about a half an hour to an hour when it's minus 10 C or 14 Fahrenheit and approximately 70 to 100 minutes when it's minus 20 to minus 4 Fahrenheit. And then it says the battery will, will be charged after the heating has been stopped. Then it goes on to talk about charging methods, state of charge, what kind of chargers to use. It's, it's very well written here. You have recommended cable sizes per the ampers that you're going to be drawing. Talks about wiring in series and parallel. Uh, again, very similar to some of the other manuals that we've uh, tested on the channel here. So that's enough about the manual. Let's get to testing. So the most important thing with any battery is does it actually give us the capacity that's rated? So when I got this, I went ahead and charged it all the way up. Then I did a discharge test at 10 amps and let it go until the battery shut off, the BMS shut it off. And I got 102.49 amp hours out of this battery. So it definitely passed the 100 amp uh, capacity test. Now, let's go back in time to where I threw this in the freezer and we'll take a look at how all this heating function works and uh, how it works. This battery has been in this freezer since Thursday. It's now Monday morning and it's been a constant 21 degrees Fahrenheit inside. So I wanna see one, how the heating works. So we're gonna hook up a 20 amp charger. This requires at least a 15 amp charger. 
and it should not charge, but once it senses a charger hooked up to it, the heating pads will start kicking on. Once it gets warm enough, it's gonna start charging. But I'm gonna leave it in the freezer to see one, will it warm up? And two, will it keep warming while it's charging? Or once it, once it gets down uh, below freezing again, will the charging cut off? So we're gonna find that out. So got the 20 amp charger hooked up. Go ahead and turn it on. And right now that's charging. No, oh, it's not. Well, it's putting 10 amps in. Yeah, it says 14.1 volts. This battery only has about 20 amp hours into it because I drained it. And then I only charged it for about an hour. So I'm not sure what it's doing, but I'm getting 10 amps in. So maybe that's just heating. I honestly don't, it, it wouldn't be showing this high a voltage. It's showing 14.08 volts. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be nearly that high. So I think it's working. So I'm gonna put it back in the freezer and see what happens. So I guess I'll know, cause really the voltage should be at about 13.1, 13.2 right now, maybe 13.3 where it's, where it's at in terms of state of charge. And given that I'm not seeing 20 amps coming in here, I guess it's working. So I'm gonna throw it back in the fridge and I'll check back in a half hour and then an hour and see what's happening. So after further testing, that 10 amp draw that we're seeing right now from the charger, that is in fact the BMS turning on the heating pads and warming the cells before it starts charging. Again, when I put my meter on here and it was 14 some odd volts, that's just the voltage we're seeing from the charger. That's not the battery's voltage. So this is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. All right, so it's only been a half an hour since that last clip and we're already putting 20 amps into the battery, which kind of scares me. Like it's not even remotely warm. It's still pretty daggum cold. Let's see what the voltage is now. Yeah, 13.4 volts. So it is charging now. So I think in that last clip that 10 amps, was it warming up? It, the instructions say it takes like an hour for this thing to heat up though. Um, well, 30 to 60 minutes, if it's 14 degrees, it was 21 degrees. So we might, we might have already heated it up in this time. So it, it kind of looks like it's working. I don't really have a great way to, to officially test this, but um, I think I'm just gonna charge this up and then I'll do another discharge test and see if we lost any capacity due to degradation of cells from it charging too cold, but it seems to be doing the thing. Now, after we charged this up using the internal heating function, I did another capacity test. Still got 101.72 amps, which I think is perfectly normal. I don't think that's any cell degradation at all due to uh, the cold cells being charged. I think this battery performed exactly as it should, and those uh, types of losses uh, should be expected with any brand new battery. So uh, definitely pass that test in my opinion. Now to my favorite part. Let's see what this battery can do. I wanna test the current draw, the overcurrent protection, and uh, this should have, I think it said 310 amps surge protection, so we'll go ahead and test that. I've got some really high quality one aught gauge uh, welding wire connected to this, as well as a 250 amp breaker and a 3000 watt inverter, so we'll hook up our heat gun and uh, see what kind of current draw with our meter here there, and uh, let's get to testing. Battery's at 13.3 volts. Now we're pulling about 690 watts per the inverter there, about 60 amps on our clamp meter here. Handling it no problem. Inverter's seeing 12.7 volts, putting out 119 volts. Kick this up to high gear. 124 amps we're pulling now, 1330 watts. I would kind of expect the BMS to shut this off now due to overcurrent. So we'll let this go for a few minutes, see if it see if it does eventually kick kick itself off. So 
it's been about three minutes that I let this go at about 124 amps. The BMS never cut it off, um, which is fine for now. Everything's still uh, relatively cool. There's no heating on the terminals or anything. Um, I mean, it's maybe slightly warmer than room temperature, but uh, that's about it, so that's good. So now I'm gonna hook up my uh, space heater as well as the heat gun here and see maybe, you know, if it doesn't turn off at 124 amps, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe they're just under promising and over delivering. But if this BMS doesn't turn off at all with overcharging or over discharge rather, um, that would be a fail. So let's put some more current through this and see what happens. And here's our friend, Mr. Space Heater. Let's go ahead and turn this all the way up to high. And we're about 92 amps we're pulling out of that. The inverter says 1,030 watts. Let this get up to temperature here. Now I'm gonna put, uh, so we're pulling about 89, close to 90 amps per the meter here. I'm gonna kick the heat gun on low, which should get us to maybe 100 and, I don't know, 150 amps. Yep, 151 amps there. 151 and a half amps, 1640 watts on the inverter it says. Still not shutting off, let's kick it into high gear. 198 amps, 197.5, 2150 watts per the inverter, and there we go. So it just shut off. That is a good thing. Uh, a little bit higher than advertised, but I think uh, everything is still going to be safe with that. Let's go ahead and shut everything off, and we'll see if this uh, resets itself. Hopefully we won't have to hook a charger up to this to reset the uh, BMS. You might, some batteries do that. Hopefully we don't have to do that here. And we don't, the inverter is back on. So after, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds or so, uh, the BMS saw that there was no load on it, turned itself back on, and now we are right as rain. So, passed with flying carpets. So there we have it, the 100 amp hour self-heating lithium iron phosphate battery from Redoto passed all of the tests we could throw at it. I'm not even worried about that overcurrent protection. Yeah, it didn't shut off until about 190 amps. Shut off quickly when we did that, but that's uh, that's not gonna degrade the cells in any way, uh, shape or form. Lithium iron phosphate cells are very durable. And at 329 bucks, kinda hard to beat. I'll leave links to my Amazon store where you can pick one of these up. But what a great solution for those of you that are camping, that have RVs. Uh, you will be out in the cold, the battery will be in the cold, and you need to charge it when it's frozen. This is your solution. Guys, thanks so much for watching. My name is Mike Cade. I'm Artie. This is Ham Radio Tube 73.